Ankle fracture, mesonave fracture. Mesonave fracture involves fracture of the proximal fibula associated with an occult unstable injury of the ankle. The problem in these patients occurs when the ankle injury is presented without a fracture of the lateral malleolus or the medial malleolus, and the injury is mistakenly diagnosed as an ankle sprain, and the proximal fibular fracture is missed. Examine the leg for tenderness in the proximal fibula to diagnose a proximal fibula fracture. The patient could be mistakenly treated for having just some isolated proximal fibular fracture and the ankle injury is missed. A high index of suspicion is necessary to diagnose and treat this injury. Mesonave fracture equals syndesmotic injury. Syndesmotic injury equals syndesmotic fixation. If ankle x-rays show medial or posterior malleolus fracture or a medial clear space widening with no fracture of the lateral malleolus, then you must obtain a long leg film to assess possible proximal fibular fracture. Clinical examination of the entire leg for pain and tenderness, in addition to long leg films of the entire leg that includes the ankle and the knee, is mandatory in case of the patient with a proximal fibular fracture to exclude the presence of an additional ankle injury or if the patient has an unexplained increase in medial clear space of the ankle joint. He should be searching for the presence of a high fibular fracture. This is a high fibular fracture, so look for signs of syndesmotic injury. Unexplained increase in medial clear space or tibiofibular clear space is widened and it should be less than 5 mm. So, how do you explain that injury? It is explained by the presence of rotation force to the ankle with transmission of the force through the interosseous membrane, which exit through a proximal fibular fracture. Mazonave fracture occurs from external rotation of the foot, most often with pronation mechanism. This force has to go somewhere, so if you don't see a fracture of the fibula, then do the squeeze test or the extender rotation stress test. Both will show you a syndesmotic injury. The injury can involve the deltoid ligament injury or medial malleolar fracture medially and a fibular fracture proximally. In addition to the tibiofibular ligaments, which can be the anterior tibiofibular ligament, the interosseous ligament, the posterior tibiofibular ligament, or posterior malleolar fracture. So that looks like a very unstable ankle injury that may not be very obvious at presentation, and you got to look for it. So how do you treat that? You treat it by fixation of the tibiofibular syndesmotic injury. That is the key of treatment of this injury. Mesonate fracture, you fix it by syndesmotic screws. If you have a medial site injury, if it is a torn deltoid, leave it alone. If there is a medial malleolar fracture, you should fix that. On the lateral side, if there's a proximal fibular fracture, leave it alone. And for the syndesmosis, the fixation have to be stable and adequate. Because of the magnitude of the injury, 
Mesonate fracture may require more syndesmotic screws than in routine ankle fracture with syndesmotic injuries. After the fixation, you'll give a short leg non-weight bearing splint for six to eight weeks. Here is a patient case example, a proximal fibular fracture, and you can see increase in the medial clear space, and you can see the syndesmosis is widened. You can see that posterior malleolar fracture. The patient is pricked with syndesmotic screws. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.